Okay. I've shared this before, but as I look around and everybody that's left in here this morning, I see a couple of uh, hard copies, a few Geraldo Rivera interviewees, <laughs> and about the rest of y'all belong on Jerry Springer. <laughs> The reason why I'm saying that is everybody in here, all of us have a past. Some of us have been able to reconcile it and some of us have not. Matter of fact, there are people sitting in here this morning that are very similar to the baby elephant that was taken to a circus many years ago, put a chain on his leg, and he gave it a few tugs for about a year or two and when he saw that he wasn't going to avail anything, he just gave up. And when he became grown, he could have just tugged it real easy and ripped everything right out the ground and kept walking, but he didn't try anymore because he felt there was no use to try. Maybe that's how you are this morning with your past or with your struggles that you're in even at this very moment. We've become comfortable in our weaknesses and refuse to move forward and as a resort result rather we have no victory as a matter of fact many of us have become comfortable in our weaknesses because it's something we're familiar with and we do not have the motivation for change when we're when we're confronted with it we shrink back and we tend to run we don't want to be we don't want to hear it because it takes us out of our comfort zone. And let's face it, who in here likes to be taken out of their comfort zone? I don't know of anybody with human nature that does. We're filled a lot of times with fear and doubt because of the examples that we've seen in other people. Matter of fact, the Bible brings it all out in the open. And there were many people in the Bible that looked upon their condition just like maybe you have with fear, guilt, depression, and so forth. One of them that comes to mind is Job. In, in Job chapter 14, he was a man that lost everything in a few moments of time. And that can happen to any single one of us. Like Mike was sharing, don't think you got it made when you're flying high because you could be down at the bottom 10 minutes from now. Job made this statement, and boy, did he tell the truth. Uh, in, John, uh, in Job 14.1, he said, Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Here was a man that was experiencing loss on a level that few men have ever really experienced. A deep loss. He, he, he had sickness and loneliness and anything that could possibly happen to anybody happened to him. But that wasn't his end, thank God. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. I think of Cain. He, he was a man that was self-centered, selfish, and angry. And he gave in to those feelings and later became a murderer. And when God caught up to him, this is what he had to say. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Maybe you feel that that's where you are right now with what you're going through. And then there was King Solomon, the richest and the wisest king to ever lived. And when he looked around at all of the stuff that he had, all he really saw was emptiness and depression. Hard to believe, huh? The richest man that ever lived. Nobody even today can rival the riches that Solomon had. He put more money on his nightstand at night than Bill Gates has in the bank. Literally. I don't know if you have a nightstand or not, but still, pretty big nightstand, eh? But look at what, when he looked around at everything, you know what he wrote? By the way, he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. He says, this is, this is really something. Vanity of vanities, said the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. That literally means emptiness. You would think that a man that had all the money in the world was considered the wisest man that ever lived, had 700 wives. Well, that's not really wise, is it? 700 wives? Oh, I'm, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> he swore that everything was 
emptiness. Wow. Then there's King David. David was so contrite because of the sin that he had committed that it drove him to great repentance, and that's as it should be. His heart was truly for the Lord, and because of the great sin he committed, he wrote this psalm, and, and part of it's Psalm 51, which is a song. He says, cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. That was the cry that David had because he so longed to restore fellowship with the Lord that he had lost because of the sins. The mighty Apostle Paul attempted to take stock of his life. And he even wrote, he said, if anybody could brag on their flesh, I the more. And he named all these things and he was like the most credentialed and pedigreed man that lived in his time. But when he compared his life to the holiness of God, Wow, listen to what he said. Now this is coming out of Paul's mouth. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? That came from Paul. Now let's get to where the rubber meets the road and, and get it a little more personal here. All of us fit into one of those aforementioned scenarios. Some of us more than one. And here we are in church, hoping and praying that nobody sees behind our mask. After all, we are in church, aren't we? Everybody here is supposed to be perfect and problem free, right? <laughs> By the way, if there's anybody in here that's perfect and problem free, get out. <laughs> You're ruining it for the rest of us, okay? <laughs> Mm. Well, if you think that because you're sitting in church you need to be problem free, you're wrong. You could not possibly be more wrong. Do you know why we're all here? Because we're not all there. <laughs> I heard somebody at a mental institution say that one time. We're all here because we're not all there. That's true spiritually speaking. Think about that. Think about that. We are here because we do have problems. We do need Jesus. We do need prayer. And we do need healing. That's why we're here. Lord knows nobody would come to this church out of curiosity. Now, I'm serious. You wouldn't. I mean, you wouldn't come but one time, and some of y'all keep coming back. So either you got problems, or you're really glutton for punishment. One of the two. <laughs> In most churches today, the first thing we do when we have sinned, when we've been hurt, or when we have problems, first thing we do is we conceal. Just like Adam and Eve. When, when, when they had sinned, they went running and hiding from God. And, and, and some of you are hiding from God in, behind your own tree right now. You are. Hoping that no one sees what's going on in your life. And, and, and here's God calling your name like he did Adam. Where are you? Adam, where are you? Maybe you're not like them. Maybe you're like David. You really messed up bad, and now you're covering that up with more sin, just like he did. And you know what? It's going to just get worse and worse and worse. It will not get better attempting to cover up sin with more sin. People that have done these things are thinking, oh, what will the, what will the church think if I come clean? What will my family think? Well, let me tell you, you need to be like that woman that had that issue of blood and spent all of her money on doctors and nobody could help her. And so she pushes through that crowd and does everything she can to get to Jesus so she could just touch the hem of his garment. 
But and you've got to come to the point to where you don't care what anybody thinks anymore. You got to get your healing from Jesus. Amen. When you get to that point, then you're well on your way. But as long as you're worrying about what the church might think, what your family might think, what your friends might think, then nothing is ever going to happen. You got to get to the point where you don't care what anybody thinks. You want to make it right with God no matter what the cost. And folks, if you're in the right kind of church, you, you don't need to wear a mask. You don't need to cover it up. And you sure don't need to be afraid. Here's, here's what you do. Number one, confess. Very simple. Leviticus 5.5, 5, and it shall be when he shall be guilty in one of these things, he shall confess that he hath sinned in that thing. Psalm 32, 5, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I will confess my transgressions, my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then here's a real scary one right here that a lot of people don't want to read. But we've done it before as a church, and it was an amazing healing time for people. James chapter 5 and verse 6, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And that means you ought to be able to look to the side of you or behind you or in front of you and take somebody by the hand and say, this is what I'm going through. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm struggling with. Pray for me. And they ought to be able to pray for you and not worry about it being gossiped over. That's the way it ought to be. I saw a real cure for gossip in a church I was working at in Rustburg one time. One Sunday night. Before the service, we'd all go back to the prayer rooms. We had a man's prayer room and a lady's prayer room. And at the, right as the service got started, the pastor called two people up front. And he said, now I want y'all to tell the rest of the church what y'all were gossiping about instead of praying over in the prayer room. You could have heard a pin drop in that church that night, but that was the end of all the gossip. Getting real quiet in y'all afraid I'm gonna call somebody up here, don't you? I see y'all won't even look at me. Confess is the first thing. The next thing is to confront. We must confront our sins, we must confront our problems, and we must confront our shortcomings head on. You want to get healed, you got to stand up to it. you got to confront it. Amen. This is the only way to handle this, the only way to get rid of them. you got to learn how to fight. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. I think of this real spiritual event I saw on an episode of The Simpsons years ago. <laughs> Marge Simpson had come down with an addiction to gambling and she couldn't stop and so her husband went and fetched her out of the casino and brought her home and she kind of came to herself and she said well now that I've stopped maybe I need to go get counseling and he went no oh, no no that's too expensive just don't do it anymore <laughs> <laughs> it's funny but it's true Stop it! Amen. Stop doing what you're doing. Don't hide your sins. Confront them. Psalm 51, 3, For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. And the next thing we need to do is to examine yourselves in light of these scriptures right here. Yes. Like he said, this is it. This is the deal. This is the final word. Oh, it was Mike that said it was the deal. I don't know. Both of y'all were really well lit this morning, and you told the truth. 
Well, whoever said it, you told the truth. Amen. Look at your life in light of the scriptures. Bring them out in the open. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says to examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, and prove your own selves. Know you not... You, know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you unless you be a reprobate? Again, judge yourself. It's okay, it is scriptural to actually judge yourself. It really is. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight 28 is talking about the Lord's Supper and it says, But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. For when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. So see what God has to say about this. Too many Christians running around today doing things because they think it feels good or they think it makes them happy and everybody will gather around and say, you know, that's just great that you're happy. You might be living for the devil. You need to look at this. Happiness is not always the right thing because that's going to be a temporary happiness that you're going to wind up with. A very, very temporary one. Only the Lord can give lasting joy and lasting happiness. Trust me, I've been there. I can tell you of the truth. Confess, confront, and the last thing is conquer. Romans 8, 37 said, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, But thanks be to God that gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John 5, 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. You have got to believe that God is able to see you through these things. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Don't let somebody bring your past up to you if you are walking with the Lord. Because you are not that person anymore. You're new. You are a new creature. Yeah. I, I've, I've shared this a hundred times but it, I, I love to, uh, to bring the point home again. Back many, many centuries ago, there was a man named Augustine, and he was a very prolific writer. And he struggled and struggled with sin before he actually became a child of God. Before he got saved, he, he was the biggest womanizer of his Time, I guess. That was his thing. Love chased women. And he would pray and say, God, make me chaste, but not yet. <laughs> what an awful prayer. You know, God, forgive me of this, but not yet. God, take this away from me, but not yet. And he was at least honest. He was at least telling the truth. And when he, he got saved, he was walking down the street one day and a prostitute that he used to visit frequently spied him out and she goes running to him and says Augustine Augustine he wouldn't look at her he kept walking and finally she jumped up in his face and she said Augustine it is I and he looked at her and he said yes but it is not I brand new creature and you can walk in that You conquer your sins by 
filling your heart with the word of God by confessing them and getting them out of the open by repenting and by walking with the Lord daily and that requires prayer fellowship and reading the word let me tell you folks you already probably figured it out the devil is hitting you with every gun he's got right now more so than any other generation because the devil knows he's got but a short time and he's going to grab everybody he can to take them with him before he goes to his doom. And so it's important that you have your guard up. It's important that you're strong and you're walking with the Lord. Recognizing that God is able to give you this victory is the key. 1 Chronicles 29, 11 says, Thine, O Lord is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is yours. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. That ought to be your prayer. Folks, if you're ever going to grow, if you're ever going to be what God wants you to be, first of all, that past has got to be gone. Second of all, those struggles have got to be confronted and confessed and put under the blood of Jesus Christ. It's time to be honest and open and get the mask off. I know it's terrifying. I know that. I know that. But how bad do you want restored fellowship with the Lord? How bad do you really want it? Are you willing to do that? If you, if you are, you can find rest for your mind and your soul. But you got to come clean with the Lord. I want y'all to know whoever you are in here, you are loved. We love you. We are glad you are here. We don't want you to walk out of here in the same condition that you came in with if you're struggling, if you're having a hard time. We want you to we want to pray with you. We want you to be able to get it under the blood and walk out of here and never think about it ever again. But we can't drag you down here to do it. That's up to you. You've got to come willingly before the Lord. I'm going to ask if everyone would please stand. Christians, would you pray really hard? The devil's going to try to distract people more than anything right now than he ever has. He's going to tell you, you've got next week you can fix this. You've got another month. You've got years ahead of you when not a single soul knows that how many minutes you've got in front of you. Don't be like that baby elephant and just gave up. Let's rip those chains out of the ground this morning and come and get it under the blood. Prayer warriors, would you come and stand? If you need somebody to pray with you, these people love you. They will pray with you and do anything they can to help you. But it's up to you to come and say, I need prayer. I'm struggling. So who would come this morning to the altar or take one of these folks by the hand? You can just come to the altar yourself and, and, and talk to the Lord. But if you have a need, would you come as candy saints? Would, would you come? Let's take care of that this morning. Let's, let's get rid of that. Oh, if you know it, come on, clap your hands. It'll be all right. Faithful. God is faithful. I know he is. To perform. Perform his word. Faithful 24 7. God is faithful. I know He is to perform. Somebody hold up the Bible. Perform His word. There you go. Woo, come on. God is bigger than my mountain. He's bigger than my valley. He's bigger than my problem. Bigger than my pain, our God, oh our God, yes He is, God is faithful. God is bigger than my mountain, He's bigger than my valley, He's bigger than my problem, bigger than my pain, our God, oh our God, yes He
done the whole song we're just going to repeat it help me faithful every day God is faithful I know he is, I know he is. to perform God's going to do it perform his word yes, yes, faithful night and day God is faithful, I know he is, I know he is, to reform, God's gonna do it, reform his word, yes, yes, God is bigger than my mountain, he's bigger than my valley, he's bigger than my problem, bigger than my pain, I got, oh I got, Yes, he is. God is faithful. God is bigger than my mountain. He's bigger than my valley. He's bigger than my problems. Bigger than my pain. Our God, oh our God. Yes, he is. God is faithful. Our God. Lift my hands and give him praise. God is faithful. Our God, lift my hands and give him praise. God is faithful. 